Hello, today we are going to make our player jump. Let's start fresh and create our player once more so that we can practice a bit more. So we'll right click in our hierarchy window and choose create empty. Now let's change the name of it and call it a player. In order to see our player we have to add some sprite component to it. So just click on add component and choose sprite renderer. Here we are going to use a circle sprite that is provided with the unity so just choose knob and maybe let's make it bigger so just scale it up five times save it and change the color of it to some maybe bluish so it stands out a bit in order to move it and detect collisions we need to add two components collider and the rigid body so click on the player Add the first one which is collider. Our character is round so we have to use a circle collider 2D. Add rigid body. We have a 2D project so we are choosing rigid body 2D. And in the end the last component we need for now is the script of course. So add component and give it a name. The best name for moving the player is player movement. So just type player movement and press enter. We've got our script ready so we can open it. But let's go back to Unity once more time and just maybe create some kind of the ground for our player so it can drop on it. So just right click, create empty, call it a ground and let's add some collider. It will be a box collider. 2D of course. Let's expand it on X axis so it covers our camera. Move it down and maybe let's add some sprite to it so it's not invisible. So just make a sprite render a component and choose something that is provided with Unity. Maybe UI sprite for now and just increase it on the X it doesn't look that good, but we can leave it as it is, like so, and move it down. So in our camera it will be looking pretty good. And change maybe the color of it to some brownish, like so. Just save it and let's get into the code. First thing we need to do is to make a reference to our rigid body component. So just call it rigid body 2D and give it a name RB. Now in the start method we have to make a reference. So RB get component brackets rigid body 2D and parentheses. Save it. In order to move it left to the right, because jump you will see it better when we will be able to move to the right and to the left. So let's make this functionality first before we get into the jumping. So we have to create some variables for moving left to right and some speed so we can decide how fast the player can move. So let's create a float move x and speed. We can assign some value to the speed straight away, maybe 10f should be fine. And now in this update method, we are going to check if somebody pressed the button to move left or right and assign a value to it. So we are using our move x variable and take input from the user. So input dot get axis. I will use get axis row. You can use get axis as well and parentheses inside the parentheses we have to provide this axis name so i will put horizontal now inside this variable we will get the value from minus one zero or one so it will be deciding whether we are moving left or right or we stay stationary we need to move our character but because we are using rigid body we shouldn't use it inside the update method the method that is working with physics is a fixed update which we are going to create below. So just type fixed update and inside we are going to move the character. So let's call RB and now use velocity to move it equals 
and now we have to provide a new vector too. So new vector and inside the vector we want to use our input from the user. So move x and maybe we can multiply it by the speed straight away. So let's do it speed and then as the y value we can add the value that the velocity is at the moment. So we can just use rb velocity and y. Save it and let's have a look if this is already working. Just press play and see our ball is dropping down and as you can see this is working fine. In order to make it jump we can of course make it on several ways but I want to show you the one I'm using. So first we need to create some variables. First one will be the jump force so we know how high we can jump. So let's make it a float and call it jump force. Maybe just assign some value to it straight away like let's say 10 for now. And we need to create a bool variable as well to detect whenever the button is pressed. And when it is pressed we will just make it jump. So let's create a bool and call it is jump button pressed. So whenever we press the jump button this bool value will hold the true value and then we will we would have to change it back to the false but you will see this in a minute and we can assign some default value to it which will be false because at the beginning of our game we don't want it to be true. We want it to be true whenever we click that button. So we are going to check for it in our update method. So just go below and make a conditional statement. So how to make this conditional statement? You have to ask yourself when you want to jump. We want to jump if the jump button is pressed. So let's make it if now within the parentheses we give this condition. So if input get button down, get button down and now we have to specify which button is to be pressed and this is the jump button and now within the curly brackets we, we need to specify the actions, the instructions that should be executed. So what do we want to do? We want to change this bool value. So is jump button pressed equals to true because yes it was pressed. So now in the fixed update we have to do a jumping. So just go below and now we have to check if the jump button was pressed. So if is jump button pressed equals maybe I will do it this way. When we are checking the bool value we don't really have to provide this bit but I will put it in so it's easier for you to understand it or to read it. And now if this jump button is pressed we have to do some instructions. So what are we going to do? We need to use our rigid body component. So just say RB and then after the dot we want to add some force so our player will jump up. So just call add force. And now if we add parentheses you can see that this method is expecting vector2 force. So we have to create a new vector2. Just say new vector2 open the parentheses and here we have to specify at what direction this force should be applied. We want to jump, jump straight up so we don't use anything on the x value but we are going to use our jump force that we declared previously on the y axis. And now we can just put a semicolon at the end and once we jumped we have to change this is jump button press variable to false because we don't want it to keep jumping all the time. We want to jump it only once. So we have to get back this variable to the false value. So is jump button pressed equals false semicolon at the end. Let's get rid of this comment. So we have our script nice and neat. Go back to Unity and press play and see if it's working. 
the jump button is space so I'm clicking space but nothing works so why it doesn't work let's go back to the code in our add force method there is another way of adding a force we can specify a force mode so after the vector 2 just put colon and here you can see that we need to specify the force mode 2d so just call it force mode 2d choose this option and put a dot and here you can choose one of those options and we are going to use an impulse so this is like one you know impulse so that we'll get our player in the air so just put it like so save it and go back to unity if we press play and now put the space bar button and as you can see we can jump go left and jump and so on but as you can see this is jumping like quite slow this is going down pretty slow which would be good for some i don't know game that you place in the space on the moon or something you might like it but i don't like it that it is so slow so to make it drop quicker we just increase this gravity scale option i will put it on maybe seven i'll save it and press play and see how it goes and as you can see this is falling much quicker now but at the same time when we increase this gravity scale it doesn't jump as high as before so to make it jump higher we have to increase the jump force so let's make it like 30 maybe and go back press play and see if it helped and i think now it's looking really good of course you can change it to fit your needs but in general i think this is working pretty fine so i just mentioned once again you can see all of those packages with these courses and the scripts on the google drive you can follow links below this video and of course don't forget to like this video and subscribe so that we can get to more people and they can see it and learn along with us see you later